lot of people with some sort of problem, and or someone will complain about a convention sucking, and they might even recognize that it was their fault, but it was still, they could have had a better time, but they didn't, because they didn't do something, or they didn't know something that I knew, and could do, and could have told them to do. And, I mean, the main thing is, it started out, we start, like, we go to a convention, just a few of us in a room, and every year... The pe- some of the people who had drama would decide, hey, we want to stay with Rim and Scott because their room is awesome and they don't have trouble. So every year we've had more and more people stay with us. And for like this coming Otakon, I've already got three whole rooms booked in the uh, Renaissance just for us. Well, and we've had people, a- like we had a group of people ask us after the last Otakon, hey, can we stay with you guys? Because it sucked last year staying with these other people. Wow. Yeah. So I guess all I'm trying to say is we know what we're talking about when it comes to this. Mm-hmm. We may not know about viruses, um, Pete and Lisa and all you people in the forums. Yeah, but we know about conventions. <laughs> we are convention experts. So the first thing you have to know about a convention is should you go to it or not? And a lot of people really don't, like they say, oh, I want to go to a convention, but they don't really think about what they would actually do at it. Yeah, the first thing I look at when I'm looking at any convention is location and guests. Mostly location, because mm-hmm. the number of hours it takes you to get to a con is really going to affect whether or not it's worth it to go. I yeah, mean, it, driving an hour to a crappy con is not as bad as driving nine hours to a crappy con. Mm-hmm. If this is a convention less than an hour away, it really doesn't matter how crappy it is. Even if it's as bad as it could possibly be, it's probably worth going. Just yeah. because, you know, you'll get something out of it. Because when we lived in Rochester, I used to do a lot of work at the anime club where we'd go and, like, show anime at other cons in the area. So we go to these little gaming cons and sci-fi cons like Astronomicon and Unicon. And they weren't the greatest cons. They were kind of small, but they were, like, 40 minutes away, and it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But if those were, like, two hours away, not a chance. But meanwhile, something like PAX almost has enough draw to get me to cross the entire country to go to it. Yeah, we were. If we had had money, we probably would have gone this year. Yeah, we're we were definitely we seriously going next considered year. going all the way to Seattle from New York just to hang out with a bunch of nerds and geeks for a weekend. Yeah, because their convention was going to be so amazing. Of course, you know. I mean, look at the concert they had lined up. Damn, mini bosses, MC Frontline. Holy crap! Now, that, if you've never been to a con before. You really want to pay attention to what's going on at the con, because for someone who's never been to one before, you want to do all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So what matters the most usually is what stuff there is to do. Mm -hmm. But if you start going to them a lot, to the point that you've done all the stuff there is, you really don't care what the convention's doing. You just go because it's an excuse to hang out with your friends in this unique setting and meet new people. That's pretty much how it is. I mean... Once you've seen one cosplay, you've seen them all. And once you've seen one music video contest, you've seen them all. And once you, you know, had one giant LAN party, you played them all. And sure, it might still be fun to do it again, but it's not... It's, it's like once you, when you go to your first convention, all you want to do is do all these things you've never done before. And then after a few cons, you're like, i done all that, and you're looking for something new, but there won't be anything new. The only way to get something new is to go to a different type of convention, but eventually you run out of those too. And so don't be the person who goes to like their ninth Otakon and sits in the room all alone complaining that there's nothing cool to do. Yeah, you gotta, you know, you start out doing all the cool things, but then it's still cool. Some people, a lot of people, just stop going to them. They've noticed, but we keep going because you know we make our own fun. You know, I mean, the Nintendo DS helped a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, quite literally, we go to Otakon every year, and we do almost nothing at the con. We barely, I mean, we don't go to any panels. I think we went to one panel. Yeah, and then we, I ran that one panel. Yeah. And we watched, like, uh, we watched one closing ceremonies type thing. I spent more time in the live-action Asian cinema room than any other single room. <laughs> like, I might have spent equal time there and the dealer's room. I spent most of my time just hanging out. Oh, yeah, I was hanging out. Oh, most of the time total for the whole weekend, hanging out. But most of the time at con events was, you know, dealer's room in that room. You know, it's... and But newbies, they go to every single freaky panel, and they go to every single, you know, all this, you know, wacky stuff that I guess gets old pretty quick. So I guess just think about what you want out of the con, and then see if the con will provide it. I mean, if you want to see the biggest gathering of geeks in all the world... Go to Otakon, because Otakon, while it's an anime convention, is the closest thing to a pan-geek convention you'll ever find. That's for sure. 
if you want gaming, find a gaming convention because it'll be nothing but playing games with cool people all night long. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of uh, Ubercon I go to. I used to go to Michigan, but I don't live in Michigan anymore. I went to Gen Con once. And if you can ever get to Gen Con and you're a gamer, try it. But if you're not really into games, Gen Con's not worth it. There's also a con I just discovered recently called Essen in Essen, Germany. And that's the pinnacle of German board game amazingness that I will go to probably once in my life just to go. Yeah, I'd love to hit that. I think I'll just have a trip to you know Europe and just happen to have it while Essen is, is going on. <laughs> You know, I won't go. Th- I won't. It, it's not really worth it to go to Essen from all this way across the world, but it is worth. You know, if you're on a trip from Europe, what you know, why not? Now we're. I mean, the what we're talking about really applies to all cons, but almost all of our examples are going to come from anime conventions, just because those are what we go to the most. Yeah. I mean, I go to gaming conventions. Scott doesn't so much, but they're almost the same. Trade conventions are a little different, but don't worry about that. I've been to a few, a lot of trade conventions actually in the food and technology related area and job related areas. So I could talk about those a little bit, but they're yeah. they're sort of a different beast because they're not about entertainment. They're about someone trying to sell you something. So you're you're basically just walking around to booths looking at products and services. And yeah, and you're not going to run into like a gaggle of cosplayers with DSs like running to a DDR tournament at a thing like that. No, you're not. And actually, we went to one Linux convention mm-hmm. called PenguinCon in Novi, Michigan. And I got to say, that was fairly badass. Yeah, I don't think any other Peng- uh, From what I can tell based on the website and who's been to these things and, and the kind of events they've had, I don't think that any other instance of PenguinCon has lived up to the one we went to. So I'm really glad we went when we did. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it was with that one PenguinCon, but we hit solid gold. Neil Gaiman was there and told us a story. That I Scott, slept through. Scott fell oh asleep God. while he was telling it. Oh God! It was a it cool. Was so ca- sad. It was a cool Detective Cthulhu story too. Yeah, it's like he was. He said, "All right, I'm going to tell you a cool Detective Cthulhu story," and I'm like, "All right." And then he's like, "I tried to tell this story at another con, and I didn't finish." We're going to see how how many minutes it takes to tell this story. I'm going to finish it no matter what. So I'm like, "All right." Then I start hearing the beginning of the story, and I'm like, "All right." And then I fell asleep. And then when I woke up and he's like, well, it takes exactly 40-something minutes to read that story. And I said, fuck. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Plus, it was, just, it was weird because also Steve Jackson was there and he wanted to play a board game with us. Yeah, and I didn't even realize it was him. Like, we were just playing Puerto Rico in the lobby and this kind of scruddy guy walks up and he's like, hey, I kind of want to play that. And I'm like, all right, maybe we'll hook up later, you know, whatever. And then our Someone friend- comes over like a minute later. They were like, dude, that was Steve Jackson. I'm like, no way. What are you talking about? <laughs> then we go to a panel and there's Steve Jackson talking about Steve Jackson games. I'm like, oh, shite. Yeah. <laughs> But then for a, a geek fable we'll tell later, because of that fable, we didn't actually play with him. Yeah, we could have. We were all set to do it, but uh, something happened. Well, that's a geek fable for another time. Yes, it is. So, once you decide if you're going to go to a, any particular convention, you have to decide who you're going to take with you. This is probably the single most important decision you can make. One bad person in your group of people going to a con can ruin it. And... You know, there are things you can do if you happen to take a bad person or, you know, someone might turn bad, like someone who might be a good person, like might get sick or something. No matter how bad it makes you feel, you have to drop that person like a rock. Yeah, not to sound cold hearted, but if someone's dragging you down, cast them away because there are some people who go to a convention and for whatever reason just can't handle it and... They're not. They're probably not trying to make you have a bad time, but they're going to make you have a bad time. There's nothing you can do about it except to leave them alone in the room. Yeah, you're spending a lot of time and a lot of money to go to a convention. You know, no matter which one it is, even if it's like ten minutes away from your house and it costs five bucks to get in, if you're spending more than like a day there, you know, or even if you're only spending a day, you don't want that one day ruined. You know, I mean, I went to, Scott missed this one, but I went to Anime Central with a bunch of my friends, and we always threw crazy parties there, because we had another friend who got the presidential suite, and we had, like, it was expected that we had have a crazy party, and me and my friend Luke, we would, like, tend this non-alcoholic anime-themed bar, because the room had a freaking bar in it, so we made funny drinks like the Southern Belle Dandy, you know, stuff like that, it was cool, but we're getting ready to set up for the party, and there's a guy asleep in the little bar area. And we tried to move him, and he got all mad, and he was trying to explain that he needed sleep, and he was tired, and he was sick, and blah, 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 blah. So you guys can't have a party, because I need to sleep. Well, guess who slept in the hallway while the rest of us had a party? Yeah. 
you know, not that 